This is what remains of the concentration camp of Stutthof in northern Poland. Stutthof was created as soon as World War II started. It was to be a place to terrorise the population of the former free city of Danzig, as well as Poles living in the area of the Baltic Sea and pre-war Polish corridor. This building houses the Polish Coast Guard in what is today Gdansk. Before World War II, it had housed apartments, a school, a community centre for Poles living in the free city and largely working for the Polish government. In the early hours of the 1st of September 1939, units of police, SS and SA had surrounded it and arrested everyone they found there, taking them to a school in the centre of Danzig. This building was to become a transit camp to places like Stutthof. Its commander was Franz Albert Christoffel. Franz Albert Christoffel was born on the 18th of December 1898 to Ferdinand Christoffel and his wife Therese ne Wagner, the second born of five children. They were Catholics in an area which was then overwhelmingly Protestant, in the region of what is today Wenchitsa in northern Poland, but was then called Lenz. It was a rural environment. His father, Ferdinand Christoffel, was what was called a deputy on the Lovitz estate. A deputy was a farm worker who was obliged to work all year round but received accommodation for free or for low rent, as well as some cash for days worked or an annual cash sum. He also received payment in kind designed to cover the needs of his family. Later, his father got work as a forest supervisor. Franz Christoffel went to war aged only 17, being at the front line from 1916. He was wounded three times. When the war ended, he found employment in the customs administration and moved to nearby Danzig. As a result of the Treaty of Versailles, his family home, which had previously been nowhere near the Russian border, now found itself directly on the border with Poland. On the 1st of November 1930, he joined the National Socialist Party, membership number 371233. In the free city of Danzig, he can be traced as a government employee as from 1934, by which time the Nazis were in power. He became a member of the SS in 1939, and he must have impressed his superiors so much that they put him in command of the temporary prison for Polish civilians at the Victoria School, which was opened on the day the war started. Two weeks later, when the Victoria School was closed, he was running the transit camp at Danzig Neufahrwasser until December 1939. Christoffel, previously an uneducated labourer who might have strongly resented the Poles, was now together with SS Obersturmbannführer Max Pauli as his superior, in charge of the life and death of thousands of prisoners who had been rounded up in the first days of the war during the occupation of Danzig and parts of northern Poland. Even before the start of the war, the site of Stutthof had been chosen as being a suitable location to imprison those opposed to the National Socialist regime. Construction started immediately after the start of hostilities using labour from those Poles who had been rounded up in the free city as slaves. Christoffel participated in the construction of the Stutthof concentration camp. On the 1st of May 1940, he was promoted to deputy to the commandant SS Obersturmbannführer Max Pauli. From the 25th of August 1940 to the 6th of January 1941, he was in charge of the economic production at Stutthof and its subcamps. In March 1942, at the age of 43, he joined the Waffen-SS. He received the rank of SS Hauptsturmführer and he was sent to the higher SS and police leader Hans Adolf Prutzmann to the occupied Soviet Union. From May to October 1942, 
Ombudsman Commission to Christoffel with the construction sector between Kassan and Uman on the Deutschgangstrasse 4 in Ukraine. This was a 2,175 kilometer long road that was designed to run from Berlin to the Caucasus. The Ukrainian highway M12 uses part of the route of the former DG4, which you can see in this video. The construction management was the responsibility of the TOT organization, which commissioned private companies to carry out the work. Initially, Soviet prisoners of war were used as workers, but soon after work began in the summer of 1941, slave labourers, especially Jewish residents of Galicia, were also used. Numerous slave labour camps were set up along the route, which were the subject to the control of the SS. DG4 was part of the Destruction Through Work program. More than 25,000 Jewish forced labourers were murdered on this route between 1942 and 1944. Christoffel was responsible for guarding the camps. In his section, Christoffel killed the young, the aged and the infirm whilst using the physically fit for construction. However, like many Nazis, his National Socialist ideology was often stronger than his sense of practical needs and he often used to kill those who were skilled, capable of work. Jews from camps and ghettos and neighbouring Transnistria were used as slave labourer. At first, the children and the elderly who arrived were murdered immediately. Those that could work worked until they could work no more. By the 8th of October 1942, most of them had been murdered even those who were capable of still working. Christoffel was replaced by SS Obersturmbannführer Oskar Frieser in October 1942. Between the two of them, due to the cruel working conditions and mass killings, somewhere between 20,000 and 25,000 people lost their lives. For the next 10 years, the trail of Christoffel turns cold. However, by 1953, he was living in Lübeck in northern Germany. Arnold Korn was part of the German-speaking minority that lived in Romania before World War II. He was Jewish. In the early 1930s, he moved to Bucharest and started using the Romanian form of his name, which is Daigani, before moving to northern Bukovina. During the period when Hitler and Stalin were allies, the Soviet dictator demanded territory from Romania under the threat of invasion. Fearing war, the Romanian regime gave way and handed the region of northern Bukovina, formerly part of Austria, to the Soviet Union. This area was reconquered in June 1941. In the summer of 1943, together with his wife, Degani was deported to a labour camp near Mikaufka, west of the southern Bug in the Vinitsa region. He became one of the slave labourers working on the road building project. He and his wife were able to escape to Romanian occupied Transnistria and survive the Holocaust. In 1947, his notes from the camp were published in Romania and were translated into English as the, the grave is in the cherry orchard. This diary, published in German translation in 1960, was a trigger for various investigations in the 1960s in the Federal Republic of Germany into Nazi crimes committed in the forced labour camps. The central office of the State Justice Administration for the investigation of National Socialist Crimes in Ludwigsburg began investigating Christoffel following publication of the book. On the 27th of April 1960, the Lübeck Public Prosecutor's Office opened an investigation against him. For many weeks, around 100 survivors were interrogated in Israel. Dagani's descriptions were confirmed. The main focus of the investigation was the selection of inmates who were unable to work and consequently chosen for murder. Eventually, a trial date at the Itzehoe District Court was set for the autumn of 1967 by the public prosecutor, who had identified 39 of the accused. However, by this time, Christoffel was dead. He died on the 3rd of September 1965, aged 66.